Okay, so Fractal Woman recently made a video asking a question, how do parallel wires have the same geometry as a magnet? Uh, please go and watch her video for the full context. Um, so she says that um, there's the magnetic and the dielectric field. Uh, and so the blue lines going from pole to pole are the dielectric field and the red lines that are like concentric circles. They, um, that's the magnetic field. And she, she shows um, examples with like iron filings and stuff. So <clears throat> real quickly, my answer, I think I'm going to, I'm going to try to answer. I think the answer to this question is stereographic projection. I think that stereographic projection is the answer to a lot of questions. Um, so I'm just going to kind of explain that. So here is a hop vibration, which is a 3D shape. Uh, it's the result of stereographic projection of a 4D sphere. And I think that this is what uh, the, the shape of a field is is generally it kind of looks like maybe um, and that's one of the questions I have is uh, is that a Taurus I don't know it kind of looks like a Taurus but uh, so anyway this is the image you see when you go to the Wikipedia page on stereographic projection uh, kind of you know you, you know like, like study stereographic projection you, you'll see what I'm talking about so you have, uh, usually you have two sets of lines, uh, like longitude and latitude. Uh, that's, that's like a good analogy. The longitude lines are kind of like the, uh, the dielectric blue lines that go from pole to pole. And latitude lines uh, go around the other way. I, uh, you know. So the... Uh, the longitude or the uh, dielectric uh, lines, another name you could call these lines are the 90 degree field lines, 90 degree field lines. And for the magnetic latitude lines, another name you could call the uh, magnetic field is the zero degree uh, uh, field lines okay okay so i um i was messing around with this program called blender you're you're with it you're able to make 3d models and you can do animations and i was kind of messing around with it trying to um show this uh, um, so that you know other people could see so this is stereographic projection of these regular um, longitude and latitude lines zero and 90 degrees okay so now we get to the ferro cell so in this image so the lines in the ferro cell, they kind of look like the red lines, the uh, the magnetic lines. Uh, you know, the magnet is, you know, the poles are on the left and the right. You're looking at the side of the magnet, and and these these lines look like the red magnetic lines. But then hold up. When you turn the magnet to face you, you got all these spirals all of a sudden. Bunch of spirals. What's up with that? Um, so the answer to that is loxodromes. Um, you know, to to make up a sphere, to make up the sphere, you can use lines at degrees other than zero degrees and ninety degrees. And if it's a line that's neither zero or ninety degrees, it's in between somewhere. Then it makes a, a, a what's called a loxodrome. It's still a straight line, but kind of looks like it curves around and it definitely looks curvy you know once it's stereographically projected it it creates 
spirals in a stereographic uh, projection. So here's an example of a single loxodrome um, being stereographically projected. Um, and here it is on its side, um, different angles. Here's another example. So this one, the blue one, is uh, it's it's multiple lines together. It's this is more of a shallow angle, uh, and there's also an extra kind of hole in the the top and the bottom. Um, so that's what it looks like there. Uh, uh, there's different angles of it. So here it is on its side. That's what it looks like. I, I really messed around with this a lot, trying to, uh, I guess, match, um, you know, what, what, you know, match this geometry to what you see in, uh, um, in the Pharaoh cell. So here's the animation of this um, rotating for, uh, 90 degrees, like like how you'd rotate the magnet. You're looking at the magnet; it's facing towards you in the ferro cell, and then you rotate it. Um, is that kind of what it looks like? That's that's one of my questions, actually. Is that kind of what it looks like when you you look at a magnet through the ferro cell? Because I, I have, I've done ferro cells before, but uh, I'm, I'm, I haven't made very good ones. <laughs> I haven't spent that much time at it. So anyone out there, can you tell me, is, is that kind of what it looks like? <laughs> that'd be, that'd be neat to, to see if it kind of looks like that. Okay, so here, this is a single loxodrome again, stereographically projected. And I forget exactly what the the degree is, the angle of this is, but I do know that it's one full turn, which means that it starts coming out the right side and it and it goes in on the right side. One full turn. And then I add more uh, lines. There's a second line. Uh, and then there's two more and there's more. And you can kind of start to see this like rose shape or, or pine cone shape whatever <clears throat> so this is a steeper angle it's creating a different geometry it's it's i mean steeper as in it's closer to 90 degrees as opposed to zero here it is on its side and then here's one uh where i added a big uh, a hole yeah, i'm trying out different things um different colors uh, and I did another animation for this somewhere. It doesn't. It doesn't look like what you'd see in a um, a ferro cell, but I'm, I'm 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 I was starting to get there. So this is kind of like my progression, uh, messing around with. Blender. Okay, so I changed it to red now, and then I squished the image, um, and and as you can see, the the sphere is now really really squished, and it's it's almost like it's not squished enough. So you can see the, the ovals are not uh, squishy, and and so you know one would ask, well. You know why? Why did you have to squish the image to to make it look like this? And uh, psh, that's another question I have. You know, there's only so much one person can do. But you know what? I think that the actual fields are squishy. I just think they're squishy. I think that the field is actually squished. I mean, if you take two magnets and you try and put them together in the opposite direction. You can actually see the the lines kind of bend and and it's squished, you know. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It's it's squishy, you know. Okay, and then so this image is really great. And by the way, I I 
I forget where these images come from. And any of you can can you tell me who who took these? Because I I'll I'll put it in the description. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I think only maybe like five people max will watch this. So so anyway, in this image, this is really cool because this I'm going to talk about Ken Wheeler now. Uh, Ken, so first of all, I had uh, this que this question that uh, Fractal Woman had. Why is the geometry this way, but then it's also like that? So I had that question, and one day I kind of like sat down and, and tried to figure it out. And my answer was stereographic projection. And I, I figured out all this, uh, you know, similarities between the, the geometry and stereographic projection. And then I realized later that Ken Wheeler has mentioned uh, maybe like four or five times uh, the, this this concept called the Poincaré disk model. Uh, and if he elaborated on that, the Poincaré disk model, then he he would probably say that it's a uh, a kind of stereographic projection I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that's correct i think i think it's just a kind of stereographic projection where there's a boundary so in this photograph this awesome photograph that shows a kind of flat uh, ring or donut magnet in the center that kind of looks like the poincare disc model the the geometry is confined within this boundary um, and the lines one could say that the lines go off into infinity into the boundary but on the outside of the magnet it's different it it's like it goes off into infinity but it it kind of it you know there's no boundary it just keeps on going to infinity and I think that's, you know, it, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's just stereographic projection. That's it. That's that's the point of this. Um, so back to the uh, hop vibration thing. If the uh, geometry is uh, truly based off of stereographic projection. That means that the uh, field is actually a, a, a hypersphere, a fourth dimensional sphere. Uh, that's uh, we're you know it's it's being represented as or, or we're perceiving it as a three dimensional shape, and the three dimensional shape is uh, distorted. <clears throat> and so there's there there are multiple models of uh, three dimensional shape. Uh, which are stereographically projected from a 4D sphere, and the hop vibration is one of them. And this is kind of like what it looks like, and I'm not exactly sure what angle is being represented here, but as you can see, it looks a lot like a torus, um, but, you know, is it a torus? <laughs> I, I, I just don't know if it's a torus. So, so here's an image I got from Facebook, and uh, this, I, I don't know, I don't know what this guy's talking about, but there's a lot of stuff like this out in the internet, where people talk about um, phi and, and whatnot and, and nature. I have no idea what this guy's talking about right here, but... Uh, pretty sure it has something to do with the ferro cell. Not exactly sure what what it has to do with the ferro. It, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the ferro cell. As for um, plants, like this flower, um, I read this book called uh, entitled Morphogenesis by Rupert Sheldrake, and uh, Rupert Sheldrake. Um, he talks about how, you know, he has his theories about how life, you know, living, living things are formed. And he 
has said in a lot of different areas that the um, the morphogenesis is caused by a field or fields. The thing about Rupert Sheldrake is that he has kind of a dualist outlook on on that. Um, so this is this is kind of like where you you have to listen to um, people like me and Ken Wheeler when we talk about ontology and monism versus dualism. It's a big part of it. Um, I, you know, I, I, he's, he's a dual, uh, Rupert Sheldrake is a dualist because he uses terms like blueprints. So for example, he imagines like the, the, before the lizard is, is born or, or, you know, hatches or whatever, there's like out, out there somewhere, there's like a shape of a lizard floating or something. I don't believe that. Uh, what I, the way I do see it though, is that there are a lot of different forces that are represented by the, an angle between zero and 90 degrees. And depending on the materials involved and the arrangement of the materials, um, the, one of these, these range of forces are going to influence the development of the plant or animal more. I think that also happens in a, a circuit. I think that's exactly what's happening when you when you flip the switch. You're you're allowing a certain force um, to cohere, so the materials are allowed to cohere. I think that's what a circuit is. I think that's uh, what happens when you create a magnet? Um, I yeah, there's a bunch of different forces. I think more more forces than uh, whatever dielectricity or, or magnets or whatever. I think there's more forces than that. That's my outlook. There's a, a, a range, a wide range from zero to ninety degrees, a wide range of forces that are acting against each other. And depending on the materials and the, the arrangement of the materials, certain degrees, certain forces come out on top. And so those forces result in the shape. So that's what I think, that's my, I guess, theory of morphogenesis. This is uh, the cover of my book, which I published on Amazon in like last December, I think. Um, you can uh, you can pick up a hard copy. I set the price as low as it could possibly go, and I'm not going to make any money off of it. It's it's around like three dollars and and change. It's, it's it's somewhere around there. It's pretty cheap. Hard copy. Uh, or you can read my book uh, free on my website and I'll put a link or, or whatever or you can just ask me questions in a, in a comment so the title of my book is consciousness is coherence an ontological basis um, my my primary motivation uh, for studying this stuff is consciousness you know, I'm I'm communicating with um, you know electric universe people or you know electric people. And it's like a electric community, and and people are focused a lot on uh, things like maybe like free energy or uh, you know stuff like that. Um, and and that's that's really where uh, the this this community is. But also, there's another community, uh, I guess you could say, you could call them a community of scientists um, that deal with consciousness. They study consciousness, and there are conferences held um, talking about very, very similar uh, subjects. And actually, the reason I studied this is to answer some questions in the consciousness community. And it turns out that this stereographic projection 
is also the answer to what's called the combination problem of panpsychism, um, which um, it solves a lot of problems. Uh, it, you know, basically, <laughs> basically, uh, I know it sounds weird, and and I it was weird to me, but you know. <laughs> If you actually study the uh, the alternatives, it's 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 the least weird. So basically, what I'm saying here is that, well, magnets exist, <laughs> uh, and uh, and so therefore, panpsychism exists. And and yes, we do have consciousness. It's a field. It's a it's an actual physical force, just like magnetism. And I think it's somewhere in between zero and ninety degrees. Uh, and, uh, and then in the title it says an ontological basis because everywhere I go, um, including, include, and see, this is one of the, one of the many reasons I, I called electric universe people dumb. I, I'm, I apologize for that. I, I don't mean everyone's dumb. I, I'm just talking about the dumb <laughs> Very specific dumb people. I, I, I didn't mean to demonize an entire group. Um, well, anyway, uh, everywhere I go, no one really acknowledges the importance of, of, of the, the, the fundamental, I guess, ontology or, or, or logic of uh, whatever whatever you're talking about, it, for example, people, a lot of people say vortex, it's vortexes, there's, you know, everything's made up of vortexes, um, and that's supposed to be like a, a, um, a better alternative to, to physics, but it, it's really not, because you can't just end with vortexes, because, you know, you know, what causes vortexes, that's the next question, and, and you have to, you really you got you can't just end there. And so, long story short, monism um, is is really the the solution. And what that means is that you have to end up in a place that's um, you have to end somewhere. When you say, "Oh, this is made of this," well, what's made of that? Um, this is made of that. You, that has to end somewhere, and it ends, I think, with with um, just I don't know the existence of geometry, like shapes, just the just the objective existence of geometry. I think that uh, I don't I don't believe in uh, repulsion. I just think there's attraction, um, and the reason for attraction is just. Uh, that's that's just how the geometry is it's i don't know it just wants to attract it just wants to cohere and uh that's that statement i think just pretty much explains everything anywhere <laughs> what else can i say it's you know there's a lot of chaos but there has to be some kind of a uh, objective uh, you know, set of rules uh, behind it all, and I think that uh, it's geometry of of a hypersphere and the resulting attraction or coherence. Um, so yeah, uh, please please comment. Now, the only reason I'm making this video is to comment on someone else's video. And, uh, and have a discussion. And, you know, because I, I really am interested in this. I want to know the answers to this. And I, want, I, can't, I can't do it by myself. I, I need to, to talk to people about it. <clears throat> um, so that, that would be appreciated uh, to, to, to discuss that. It's, it's just... It's interesting. All right. Thanks for, thanks for listening.